minutes today we're going to build a timber A-frame. Uh, how about go over with me exactly what we need or what we have present and what we're going to do with it. Okay, it's not a lot to it really. Uh, like I said, we're going to build a timber A-frame out of two 12-foot 4 by 4s uh, We start off by tying the, the base together with a, just a draw hitch that's going to come off. What that does is secure those two legs together. Uh, we've placed a 2 by 4 spacer in here. You need something about an inch and a half, two inches wide as a spacer <coughs> in here. And we're going to start off at the top with a 50 foot half inch uh, body cord. And we're going to tie a clove hitch around one of the legs. We're going to come down about 36 inches. Uh, and just like any other time you work with timbers, you can either use a wooden wedge and drive it in or take something and beat the edges down, increases that surface area and gives it something for that, that lashing that you're putting on there. Which this would be round lashing. It gives it something to bite into and helps reduce the possibility of any slippage. So we're going to start off about 36 inches from the top of the shortest pole and we're going to tie a clove hitch. And with the tail of that clove, what do we do to secure it? Well, in this situation, I'm just going to tie it off with an overhand. You can use a couple of half hitches. Uh, another option is, if you wanted to, you could actually marry the two ends together. Okay. Uh, but I've elected this time to just use a simple overhand. Okay. And from here, we're going to make six round turns, starting right here, and we're going to work up to the top. Okay. You want to pull this very snug. You want it, you want it very snug and stay together very tight. I don't believe you could pull it too tight. Okay, once we've made our six round lashing turns, we're going to come back to the center and we're going to proceed with two fraps up through the center. This really cinches the system down. I'm going to hold tension on this while you pull that up. Carney's going to torque this system down and we're going to come back through. Okay, there's one of our frapping turns. Okay, and there's two. Now what we're going to do, we started off with a clove hitch on this side. We're going to finish off with a clove hitch on the opposite side. tie this off we're going to take and come around the leg and tie off with a couple of half hitches just to secure the clove hitch. Okay so we've got two two half hitches which are going to function as a safety force and again with the extra tail we could tie it to the post itself or in this case we're just going to kind of neaten it up and put some tape on it and take it to the post. Keeps us securely out the way. Okay, we're ready to undo our bottom. Yeah, we can undo our our draw hitch which held the legs together, and we can actually remove, once he does that, we can remove this spacer. Alright, now at this point, Vince, before we stand it up with the A-frame, it's not like a tripod, it's not going to stay up by itself. So what do we have to have in place to have it in to, to be able to lift it up? Okay. We're going to have to have a fore and a aft guy, uh, and those guys are going to keep this thing from toppling over from end to end, uh, especially in the direction that we're using it. Typically, an A-frame is used to lean out to give us some clearance over an edge or something like that. If that's the case, you may not always be able to put your fore guy, but you will always have an aft guy to keep it from falling over. But it's always desirable, if, if you can, to have a fore and aft guy. Okay. Now we've got an anchor system that we've already put in place. We've got a 1-1-1 picket system 
which should hold what we're doing here with the empty load, but uh, it'll even hold up to what poundage? A 111 is going to hold in, in most soil, typically is rated for about 2,000 pounds, so it's a, a pretty significant anchor. Okay. Now before we raise it, you know, a lot of times I've seen people when they're doing timber rigging, they'll go ahead and, and raise it up, whether it's a tripod or the A-frame, and then they find themselves not being able to put their, their actual uh, uh, lashing at the top of it, what they're going to use. So before we do this, it's a real good idea to go ahead and, and just, uh, this case we're using two inch webbing, just kind of put it in place so it's up there and then we can pull it together when we go. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. We're going to put that directly on top of uh, where the lashing is and then we're going to take a 150 or 200 foot, whatever length rope we've got to work with and we're going to set up our fore and aft guys. That's always important to remember that your guys need to be at least one distance of the A-frame. So if this A-frame is 12 feet tall and you're working at about nine foot, we need to be back at least nine foot, but preferably one and a half times would give us the maximum strength. Okay. So we're looking at the four and a half guys being one and a half times the distance of the working height of the A-frame. Okay. And all we're gonna do is tie two clove hitches around each, each of the legs. Okay, we've got both our clothes on secure. And what do we do next? The next step, we're gonna stand the A-frame up and spread the legs. Okay. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay, we're actually gonna to have to pivot this around because we want the legs to spread in this fashion the fore and the aft guy are going to pull in those directions. Okay, we'll take that leg, I'll take this one. You got the A-frame? I've got the A-frame. Now we've got our artificial high directional and this rope right here would come back and depending on the application it can be static if we know it's going to lean to a point and stay there we can do something as simple as a round turn and two half hitches uh, a follow through figure eight it really doesn't matter a clove hitch and a couple of half hitches a clove hitch it doesn't really matter if it's going to be a fixed point if it's not going to be in a fixed point and we need the ability to adjust it what we can do is we can use an anchor strap and a haul system right here and attach to this line and that gives us a little more flexibility during the operation we can actually move the luft or the lift and the angle of the A-frame. If you would lean it out just a, about a third and I'm just going to take and working with a bite so I don't have to pull a hundred feet of rope through I'm going to make a round turn with the bite and then two half hitches. And the system should be fairly secure. From this point, if we've got a suitable anchor in front, we're gonna run our four guy to this this is really important if you've got this in a dynamic configuration where you're able to raise it and lower it. All this does is keep it from going past center and over backwards. If you don't have nothing significantly in front of you, as long as you can get out five to six feet and put in some sort of a picket or find the base of a tree or some sort of an anchor, you can tie it off when it's raised to its highest point that you want it, which would be just prior to being in the vertical configuration. Instead of 90 to about 80 degrees, and that's as far as you ever want it to lean back. Because without this forward guy, there's nothing to keep it from toppling over backwards. So the forward guy can really act as a safety as far as keeping it from toppling backwards or depending on how much of the use of the A you're using, it can actually help bringing it back and forth. That's right. One really important thing to remember, if you're pulling and you do not have this forward guy on here, you will definitely need 
to put a change of direction anchor point down low on one of the legs, as well as a rope ledger, pickets, or dig two holes to secure the two legs of the A-frame. What this does is, working with the A-frame, unlike a tripod, you actually could pull four and back. Right. Okay. If we're pulling back like this, without running through this change of direction to do the lift, it actually causes the system to want to tip over backwards. That's the reason the four guy is very important, it's crucial. If you don't have that four guy, it is imperative that you tie off the change of direction anchor here so that your pull would actually come from your high directional to a change of direction and typically run low and across, trying to compress the legs, pull them together instead of trying to spread them apart. Okay. Real quickly, just showing the, the different things we can do from this point. Securing the legs, we can bury it in the ground. We can drive pick, pickets and lash it to it. And again, what rigging we use here, even though you've just, just tied a, a round turn two half hitches to hold it, we can either put something secure, uh, a brake on it, or we can put uh, some type of mechanical advantage to actually be able to lift up whatever we need to use for our scenario. That's correct. And if you start off with a static system or round turn two half hitches, you've always got the ability to come back and put an anchor sling on here, rig your mechanical advantage with tandem triple wrap prusings, capture the load, take that knot out, and then you've got the mechanical okay. advantage system that allows you to convert that into a dynamic system. Just another tool for our toolbox.